Okay, before I show you this trick, um, this was inspired by a great magician by the name of Aldo Colombini. And this came out of his, at least the idea for this came out of his Apocalypse series. Now, I took what Aldo came up with and I changed it significantly and uh, made it a little bit of a different method, but it's inspired by that. So I wanna give him credit for that, but this is really a unique uh, secret, actually. So we're gonna take, we're gonna use two decks for this. We're gonna use a red deck uh, for the card selections and we're gonna use a blue deck here in just a second. But um, this can be a prediction trick. You don't have to do it as a prediction trick, but for this video, to make it simpler, I'm going to do a, I'm gonna make a prediction. My prediction's right here. It's this jumbo card and I'm just gonna put it under the mat right here where you can see it. Uh, and we'll just leave it there the whole time. But anyway, that's gonna be the prediction for the ending of the trick. We take the deck of cards and we shuffle them up. And this is where the spectator can really help us. We're going to take, the deck is about, what, 52 cards, right? So we say we need about 10 packets of cards, even evenly spread. Uh, so that would be about uh, 10 packets of five cards, right? So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. In fact, you can say here, you, you take some and you do that too. And they can be doing that too. So your spectator's helping you. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And they're, they're making packets. One, two, three, four, five. And we're just going to one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that worked out. And then uh, one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five, like that. Okay, so we should have 10 packets of about five cards, right? Roughly, okay. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. Oh no, and I have eight. That's why I have so many cards left. Let's go, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, uh, it's just algebra, Greg. It's not that hard. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, we have two cards left over. That makes sense, 52 cards. Okay, so we had about 10 packets of cards. And we're gonna do this, we're gonna, call, we're gonna number them. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And I'm gonna have you uh, begin eliminating uh, packets of cards in a really unique way. We're gonna take this deck of cards right here, also shuffled up. And for every card that you pull out of this deck, uh, whatever the value of that card is, that's the packet that we will eliminate. This is one, two, three, four, five, packet number six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 like that, okay? So in other words, it works like this. So the card, they can choose whatever card they want on the deck. We'll just go off the top. So there's the jack, that's gonna be 10. Face cards will be 10. So we're gonna eliminate the pile number 10. Let's get rid of that one. Next card is a four. So let's get rid of one, two, three, four. We're gonna get rid of packet number four. Next card is an eight, right? Uh, that's six, seven, and eight. We'll get rid of that one. Uh, next card, we're gonna get rid of the seven. So that'd be this one. And then the next card, three, we've got to get rid of packet three, one, two, three. And by the way, they can take they, they take these out wherever they want. This can be shuffled, it's totally random. These numbers are random. And here's number five, so that would have been this one right here. So we got one, two, we got six, and I think that's nine. So we've got, or that, okay, there's number eight. There's one, that's an ace, so we get rid of the one. So we get, we're down to what, two, six, and nine, I think. Okay, so there's a 10, there's a five. There's a seven, let's put these over here, make it easier. Three, four, nine, okay, we get rid of packet number nine. Let's see, okay, six, so we got to six, we're gonna get rid of packet six, we're down to just that packet right there, fair and square, right? That's the packet you chose. That's the packet we're gonna, we're going to use. In fact, what we're going to do is we're gonna use process of elimination again. I'm gonna ask my spectator to just point to any two of these cards now and they will do that. Let's say they go like this, two cards, okay? Get rid of these, we're down to two cards. One final decision out of all of these packets and all of these cards that were shuffled, I'd like to just take one of those cards and set it in my hand. And then we'll take one of them, then we'll put it in your hand, and we'll get rid of that and say, now this is the card that you finally ended up with. And it was in fact, the three of spades. Out of all of these cards, we went through all that for you, for you to come up with the Three of Spades. And my prediction right here the whole time, that was sitting here the whole time, was in fact the Three of Spades. That trick can take a long time when you're doing it alone like this because I don't have a spectator, but when you have a spectator helping you, it's a lot more fun, a lot more interactive because they're making packets with you. They've got their hands on the cards, so it goes a lot smoother when there's other people. In fact, you have a couple people doing it for it's even it's even more fun because then they can help out. The secret is fantastic. The secret this is one of those 
tricks where I like the secret almost more than I like the effect. That's, that happens for me sometimes, and I just love the secret. So let me show you how it works. Okay, so um, again, we did it as a prediction. If you want, you could do it as a force. You could use that to have forced a card on someone and then do another trick but the card that they ended up with. But I forced the three of spades in this case. So there's our prediction. I'll just put it there for now. And the only thing I had to do at that point was I had to make sure that the three of spades was on the top of the deck, as is the case for many forces. This deck over here can be shuffled all you want, except there's something special about this deck. If you go through this deck and look at it carefully, which you wouldn't do, but you would notice that I've removed all of the twos from this deck. This deck has got everything in it. Uh, except the four twos. In other words, it's a deck of 48. If, you, if you're doing some calculation right now, you've probably already figured out where this is going. And I just love this principle. In fact, this is a principle that another, uh, there's another trick that uses dice called the Russian dice. And it uses the same principle we're about to do, the elimination of two. So there's no way for them to pick a two from this deck, right? And then of course, here's our packet of cards that are completely shoveled and I want to force the top card. So what I ended up doing, first of all, I did a little bit of a fake shuffle here. I'm doing one of these things, which is a slip cut. You know, it's a fake shuffle, right? Which I've shown you in other videos and I'm basically retaining the top card by holding it with my fingers like this and shuffling and quickly it just looks like this. I use it a lot. Anytime I want to retain a top or bottom card, I just use that. It's just too easy to not. Okay, so now I'm set to go. My three of spades is still there. Now, I don't make a big deal about the how many cards or how many stacks, kind of even make it look messy, kind of forgot, let's see, was it gonna be eight or was it gonna be 10, it doesn't matter. It needs to be kind of like you're making it up as you go, because it just looks more randomized that way. And what we're really doing is we're gonna make some, um, we're gonna make some stacks, obviously, but I have to keep my eye on stack number two, where my force card is going to be. And I need to know where in that stack it is. So what I did, you can either have it be on the top or on the bottom, doesn't matter. Let's just put it on the bottom for the sake of um, simplicity right now. You can say, we're gonna need stacks of cards that are about five, and I'll start making one. So now watch what happens. I'm taking this force, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna remember that stack, and I'm gonna remember that the bottom card there is my force card. And say, now here, you can help me. So you give them half the cards, and you both start going like this. One, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter how you do it now. One, two, three, four, five. You can go one, two, three, four, five. And just put them everywhere. All you have to do is while they're making the stacks, you begin to organize them in order. And what you want to do is make sure that stack ends up being number two. And so by doing it kind of messy like this around the table, you can say, let's see, we'll go like this, we'll go like this, we'll go like this. And I'm really forcing that um, pile to be in number two, okay? We're going to end up one, two, three, four, five with one, two, three, four, five you know, all of the all of the stacks that we want to, okay? Let's, let's just do this real quickly. One, two, three, four, five, okay. Now, these cards, none of these cards matter except for this stack, stack number two. And so, but it looks like, of course, we've shuffled the cards. The fact that they've handled them means they're even more shuffled. And there, we're putting them all over the table wherever they want to put them here. They're, they're putting some down, you're putting some down. All you're doing is very simply controlling that um, pile that's got the force card on the bottom. Also, it's very important that there are five cards in this stack. I said uh, about five, about five. So if some of these end up with six or four, they make a little mistake, no big deal. You're gonna make this one and you want it to be five, which I'll explain in a minute. That one has to be five. The rest of them will, you know, four, five or six, doesn't matter. So now the magic begins. And as you know, as I told you, we're gonna use this shuffle deck, it doesn't matter. Every card that you pull out of the deck, they can pull them out of the middle, out of the top, out of the bottom, however you want to do it, we'll begin eliminating these piles. And you wanna make a big deal about, let's number them so we don't lose track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can remember where they are as they begin to disappear. So they'll be taking cards, let me make a little room here, and putting them down and say, okay, you got a 10, that's a face cards are 10, so we're gonna get rid of the 10. And then you got a three, so let's get a three. And I would count just to reinforce that we're being fair. One, two, three. Okay, let's get rid of number three. And then see, then you got another 10. We already got that. There's, there's four. One, two, that was three. There's four. And you just continue this until you get rid of all of them. Uh, we already got rid of three. Let's see, now we can get rid of five. If you, 
Now we're looking for two and six. Let's see what's, what comes up. Oh, there's the six. Okay, so let's get rid of that one. Now we're left with that one. We're left with that one because as you and I know, there were no twos. So that one was always going to be left on the table. That's the Russian dice force principle, the elimination of two. Okay, so now we've got a great fair situation here. Shuffle deck. They helped us split them up into a bunch of little packets all over the table. We made a mess, so it couldn't be more random. And now we've got five cards here, but here's what I know as the magician. The card on the bottom of that packet, I want them to pick. I need to force it on them. And I'm gonna do what's called the magician's force with five objects. This is a great force. You can use this with other tricks. Anytime you wanna force an object of among five, this is a really cool way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna say, let's see what we got here. One, two, three, four, five. Now I know this is the one I want. And say, here's what I'm gonna have you do. I'm gonna have you point to any two cards. Now, ideally, if they point to if they point to two, any two cards, one of two things is gonna happen. They're gonna to point to this one and another one, or they're gonna to point to two cards that are not the force card, and that's fine. Either way, I'll show you how to get out. So in the demonstration, I had them do this. Let's say they point to the force card and another card. That's great, because what you can do is you say, okay, you, we chose these, you chose these, let's eliminate. It doesn't make, uh, it doesn't look bad to have eliminate the cards because that's what we've been doing the whole time is eliminating cards to get down to those. Okay, so if they do that, if they point to like this one and this one or, or these two or these two, you do that process. You have that, you eliminate the other three and then you move on. Now, um, what if they pick two that aren't force card? That's fine too. You can say point to any two, they point to these, you say, okay, we're gonna eliminate those and I'm gonna point to two and I'm gonna pick these. Okay, so you eliminated two, I eliminated two, we're left with this one. So we're, we're good, this is our force card, right? But let me show you something else. If this is our force card and we've got uh, five cards out here, five objects, whatever, that's real easy. If they point to these, we eliminate them, we get down to this one. But if they point to these or these, whatever, they say, okay, I want these, okay, great. We're gonna eliminate these. You've chosen, you've got us down to two cards. And here's a really important phrase. You don't wanna say, now pick one or choose one. You wanna say, I want you to put one of those cards in my hand because now they've been choosing cards and eliminating. We want to, this to look different because it could go either way. So we wanna do something completely different. Rather than choose a card or move a packet, I want you to put it in my hand because they don't know why they're doing that. So if they put, the force card in my hand, that's great. That's what happened in the demo, what I did. And we, it made sense to get rid of this, right? But if they put this card in your hand, that's fine too, because we've been eliminating cards the whole time. So put one of those cards in my hand. Okay, that's the final elimination. We've eliminated 51 cards now. You have eliminated 51 cards. And we're just down to this one final three of spades, which is of course the force card. So this is, this is great because the, the uh, five-way force, whatever this is called, is just really easy to do as long as you keep track of where your force card is. And then the, uh, you're also using uh, the Russian dice force. You're forcing them to end up with packet number two because of the missing twos. So I did it using two decks, two different colors, just so it's not as confusing. Obviously, this is just a regular deck with the force card on top reds what i used and for the for the blue ones i just went through and took out all the twos so we can do the elimination of two force okay two things combined into one that make an astounding effect it's actually really fun to do because it's very hands-on it's almost like you're playing cards with somebody but you're doing something that's really incredible and when you end up at that prediction or that force whatever revelation you want to use it is astounding so play with that and make it your own